Hi, welcome to the show. My name is Brandon Fertig, and this is Minneapolis Expression, the show where I bring on Minneapolis' best, bring them on to interview them, talk about them, and discuss with them what they do to, to, to express themselves in the city, uh, helping make Minneapolis the expressive city that it is. Today, my guest is Carrie Reed. She's a woman who is running for the school board of, uh, of Minneapolis. I'm proud to have her on. Carrie? Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. Um, go ahead and look into old camera one there and give us a little bit about uh, why you're running for school board. Okay. I'm running for school board because there's many children in my neighborhood who can hardly read. I homeschool my five children and my seven and eight year olds can read better than some of these high school students. I'm deeply concerned for our failing school system. And I'm a concerned taxpayer as well. Um, I mean, I, I, I hear that, you know, these students can't read. And honestly, that, that kind of falls on ears that my initial reaction to that is, uh, Pisha, she's just, she, you know, they, they, they can read. You know, I mean, how, how, how disparaging is it between your kids and comparable age or even older students that you see as representative of the performance in Minneapolis public schools? Well, it's enough to embarrass the older students when they're reading. My, my seven and eight year olds, I wouldn't say they're that much above grade level, mm -hmm. you know, but they are, they do score well on their test scores. I feel bad for the you know, there's sophomore and juniors that are reading at our home and they're stumbling over words and it's hard for you to believe that. Yeah, well, a little bit. Um, but I'm not a parent in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I'm not plugged into the public school system like, like you are or like other parents are. And so my experience and maybe others at home can relate to this, I don't know, but I went to school. Reading was pretty easy. I picked it up when I was little, and you know, whether I read older or not, it was my choice. I had the capabilities to read. I thought the school did a good enough job to teach me how to read. I, you know, reading's never been an issue. And in the age where everyone reads, and when there's an illiterate person, they're like one in a million. It's just supposedly one in a million anyway. It just baffles me to know that there are people who can't. You know, it just seemed like you can't put on your own clothes, you can't eat, you can't read. It just seems like such a basic thing. Mm -hmm. And that there might be something lacking in the Minneapolis school system, uh, not helping people read. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it, it is shocking. It is shocking. And now you, you, um, uh, you homeschool your children, mm -hmm. and you're finding that their ability is, you know. Right. They're excelling, and they, it's not that much effort I put into it, I feel. Uh -huh. We're required by the state to teach four hours a day. Mm -hmm. But I find that they, I mean, they can get their work done within two hours, and they're doing very well. Mm. Um, we'll uh, can I say something else? Yeah, about I, go ahead. I, my personal experience with reading is... In, when I was in ninth grade, I was at a fifth grade reading level. I attended the public schools in Robbinsdale, and the school was failing me. And it wasn't something necessarily that um, that I was doing to not grasp it. I think just perhaps the environment and the way the system was set up, mm -hmm. I was not able to learn that well. So my mother took me to a Sullivan Learning Center, and w within three months I was reading above a college level just from being away from my peers and getting that individual attention that I needed. Um, I think it's really very interesting that uh, someone who homes... Have you ever heard of a school board member who homeschooled their children? No. I didn't either. <laughs> um, but I think it's great because um, when I first heard about it, I thought, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. It really doesn't fit. But the perspective it's given you, I think, is very, very valuable because uh, you're able to witness what your children are doing compared to what the public school system in Minneapolis is doing. And you're seeing night and day. And 
another added bonus to that, I think, is you're a teacher. And so you're a parent and a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many teachers are school board members or vice versa, you know? So I feel like, you know, perhaps that's another feather in your cap that makes you a unique candidate for the, you know, for the school board position. Um, tell me a little bit about, tell the viewers a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, besides the two points I mentioned, why you think that being, you know, a homeschool parent leads you to be a worthy candidate. Well, one thing that's big on the school board is how they spend their money, and I, um, I think the per pupil spending right now in Minneapolis is somewhere between conservatively ten thousand upwards of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars that they spend on each student per mm -hmm. year. I spend a thousand dollars between the two of mine that are in grade school, so. I think that's one thing I can offer that, hey, I'm getting these great test scores mm -hmm. and I'm not spending hardly anything. I know I, I know there's obviously other costs with right. teachers and stuff like that, but I think that's one aspect I can bring in that, hey, this is a system that works. It's different than yours and it costs a whole lot less. I'd like to put it in a positive light. I totally understand that not everybody can do this. There's single mothers right. out there. and. That, and I hope to bring in some other creative alternatives as well, things modeled after large cities that ah. um, we should get to that. I, I do want to, uh, what are other cities spending per pupil so, so we can compare? I mean, I have no idea. That sounds like a lot of money, but is St. Paul spending the same or are other suburbs spending the same? Do you know? You know I don't know the exact spending of others, but I, I think that Minneapolis is, you know, it's pretty standard of what is being spent. I, w I would have to look into that. Yeah, I don't know the answer for sure. to that. Um, so, you know, they're, but, but they're spending a lot of money. I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, parents spend um, 10 grand a year, I think, uh, ish, to send their students to private school. And I think that's a good private school. I mean, I don't think, I think that would do it. I think that would send a pupil to private school. So basically what you're saying is that we're able to send what we're spending publicly for these students, we could afford to take them all and put them in a private school. Oh, yes. That's interesting. Definitely. Um, and now they're asking for more. Right. There's a referendum levy coming up uh, that will be on this year's ballot. They're asking for $60 million, which will total um, $480 million over the next eight years. Okay. So, uh, so they want $60 million one time, or they want it for eight years for in eight a row, years. and will that sixty million be in addition to what they're already spending? Yes, yeah, from our property tax and from the state funding. Okay, this is on top of. What's their argument? That obviously the grades are suffering, and they are. I mean, we should establish that the performance, aside from just the uh, the, the, the 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 high schoolers that have been over to your house, mm -hmm. uh, neighbors friends of your children right. that you've seen underperform uh, in front of your eyes. Uh, Minneapolis test scores in general are a bit lagging? Or oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've just re they're have just they doing a restart on Washburn High School, which back in the day used to be one of the best high schools in Minneapolis. And right now they've just fired all the teachers and are rehiring the staff because of the test scores. The test scores have been so horrible there. Um, the two elementary schools I looked at that my children would have gone to, their reading is in the 37th percentile. It's above the, or that's the percentage of, that's the percentage of kids that are passing the state requirements. 37 percent of the kids. Are those tests, how, do yours, did your kids pass those tests? Well, I, I gave my children the Iowa Basics test. Okay. And they're, they've excelled, yeah. Okay. On those. Huh. 